Don't be in a, in a race to finish something. Sometimes you got to meditate on God's word. Sometimes you read a chapter and the next day you got to go back and reread it again. Prayer is our connection to omnipotence. That's why we need to pray. If people don't pray, if Christians don't pray, what is that saying? We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. We do declare that all our lives you have been faithful. Lord, even when we weren't faithful, you remain faithful, oh Lord God. Lord, when we messed up, Lord God, you not only remained faithful, you rescued us, oh God. You had patience, oh Lord God. Lord, you rescued us, oh God, when we got ourselves in trouble, Lord Jesus, and then you brought us out and showed us your love, Lord Jesus. So God, it's with grateful hearts that we gather tonight. And Father, right now, Lord, we ask that you speak to our hearts, oh Lord Jesus, as we get ready to open up your word. We love you, Lord, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, amen. Can we give the Lord a praise offering before we sit down? Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. So thankful for all of you that are here with us to celebrate the coming of the new year. It's really strange. I was watching uh, online some places where it's already the new year, like Thailand and Australia. They've already celebrated the new year, and we're still waiting for it. Um, so thankful to be in God's house with you all, waiting on the Lord. Amen. Uh, don't join us this Sunday, uh, just a couple of days from now. Tomorrow is New Year's Day, but Sunday we'll be meeting, and I have a special New Year's Eve message for us as we uh, see what the Lord has for us in the new year. Amen. Well, I want to talk to you about what the Lord laid on my heart tonight. Very, very heavy uh, I want to talk to you about what makes us afraid, right? One of the things that makes us afraid is the unknown. You know, that's why sometimes when you go to a carnival or you go, I, I grew up a few blocks from Coney Island in Brooklyn, New York, a very famous uh, amusement park, and they had these places called fun houses, although when I was younger, they weren't a lot of fun. There were just things in there to scare the bejeebers out of you. And we would go in there to get scared. And why would we get scared? Because we didn't know what was going to happen, who was going to pop out of some crevice, or what thing was going to swing down and, and, and scare us. The unknown scares us. We're also afraid of what we can't see. And I want to talk to you about what the Lord has to say about that, because, you know, how many know the last two years uh, of our lives have been really different than before that? Everything kind of has been topsy-turvy. Everything has kind of changed. And you're, you're trying to wait for it to come back to normal, and it's like refusing to go back to normal. But... One thing I can tell you is that we can live a normal life no matter what's going on around us well, because we have God with us, amen? I want to talk to you from a very famous psalm. I love this psalm. I'm going to use six verses from it. Psalm 91. This is what the Lord spoke into my heart. We're going to talk about that and draw some lessons from this precious psalm. It says this. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. 
You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. This psalm that was written quite a long time ago is speaking directly into our time today, 2021, heading into 2022. And what's the message? It's the message that has been from the beginning after man fell. The message is that when we trust the Lord, we don't need to be afraid of anything. Amen. This has been a year of fear. And there's a lot of people talking about why you should be afraid and why you should just hide out in your house. That's the message you hear over and over again. And a lot of people are are buying that. And let me tell you, if I didn't know Jesus, if I didn't have an assurance of my faith, I probably would believe them too. But we are different. We have been called out of the world, not to listen to what the world is saying. We listen to what God says. How how many say amen? Let me tell you why we don't need to be afraid. Why we can go into 2022 without fear. The Bible tells us here in Psalm 91, verse 1, that God, the Lord, is our habitation. God is not just a God far away in the sky, and he's there, and we're down here, and lots of luck to us. The Bible says that he is our habitation, our dwelling place. Verse 1 says, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High. Dwelling someplace means living there. God is a dwelling place. You're meant to live in him. It's where we're supposed to hang out. It's our home base where we spend a lot of time. 1 John 2.28, it's not on the screen, says, And now, little children, abide in him. Abide in him. Let me tell you that if you abide in God, if you abide in Christ Jesus, you will not be afraid. The problem that we have is that we don't abide in him. We live our lives, and then once in a while we visit with him. That's not what Jesus meant to happen. He died on the cross to make a peace between us and God the Father so that we can be with him all the time. I don't know about you, but I want God with me all the time. How about you? Why would I want to leave him and face things on my own? How do you make God your dwelling? What does that mean? It's all about relationship. That's how you make God your dwelling. First of all, that means speaking to him. Speaking to him how? How do you speak to God? In prayer. You pray. I I guarantee you that the majority of Christians don't pray nearly enough. We're very, very weak in prayer and speaking to him. If you want to abide in him, you got to speak to him in prayer. Then you have to listen. That's an art that we we very, very seldom use. Listen how? Listen. When you're praying, you know there's a time to speak and a time to listen. Do you know that God speaks to your heart? He speaks to your heart. Sometimes you ask him a question and he speaks to your heart. I hope you uh, experience that. God is experiential, God. If you can lower that a little bit. It's a little too loud. And so, God wants to speak to us. He also speaks to us through this word. I can't tell you, I get a kick out of it. Sometimes I'm praying and I'm asking God for things, and I always pray before I read the word. I love to spend time in prayer because this word is a spiritual word. And I got I to gotta be prepared spiritually to read it. I just don't read it like a book. I read it like God speaking And many times I've prayed things, and all of a sudden, in the scripture that I am, I read about three three of the books at a time, uh, in three different books at a time. And in one of the places that I'm 
reading, God will answer what I ask. And I always ask, Lord, how did you do that? How do you do that? How did you know that I'd be up to this part today when I asked you that question? The word of God is alive. How many say amen? Then spending quality time with him, one of the things I had to learn after I leave my quiet place in the morning that I'm not done. I'm, I'm hanging out with him all day long. Did you know you could speak to God all day long? Especially now, I've said this before, you don't have to look like you're crazy. Just stick one of those Bluetooth things in your ear and speak to God. They'll think you're on the phone. <laughs> and then learning to trust him for everything. Do you trust God for everything or do you run to him just for the big things like when you're in trouble? I've learned to trust God for every little thing, and I found that he is so faithful. Amen. That's how you make God your dwelling. And if you make him your dwelling, you will go into the new year without fear. Amen. Then there is rest in intimacy with God. There's rest in intimacy with God. You know, when you're fearful or when you're anxious, your body is in turmoil, and you feel exhausted because your, your whole body is worked up. But the peace of God gives us rest, and we can rest in intimacy with God. Listen to the rest of verse 1. I read the first part. It says, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Whoever dwells in the shelter will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. You know, the, 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 the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews and other places that the most holy place where God dwells, where the presence of God is, once we were separated from the presence of God, Israel, who was the, the only people that served the true and living God, they had a temple, and, and, and in the temple there was a room called the most holy place, and it was separated by a thick curtain, and nobody could go in there except the high priest once a year. Nobody else can go, and he had to go in there sprinkling blood. But when Jesus died on the cross, you know what happened. What happened when he died? That curtain was split. In two, the way was opened. Now the way into God's dwelling place is open to us. And here's the thing. Most people, a lot of Christians, what they do is they just look in to the holy place from afar. They, they cast a look into the holy place where the mercy seat is, but few people go into the holy place to dwell with God. And, and, and you can't rest that way. The rest is in the intimacy with God. You know, I was thinking about this. You ever, uh, when you're home and you're busy and you have a lot of things to do, you can look at your bed, but that doesn't give you rest, does it? How do you get rest from your bed? You have to go and get in the bed and then you rest, right? Me looking at it doesn't help me. Just like looking at the presence of God from afar doesn't give you rest. You got to go into his presence and be intimate with him. The Bible says you, you will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. The only way for God's shadow to touch you is for you to be in proximity to God. How does a shadow touch you of somebody else? You got to be with that person right next to them. The same way, resting in God's shadow is resting in his presence. So to move into the new year without fear, know that there's rest in intimacy with God. Also, to move into the new year without fear, you have to know that God's names reveal why you should not fear, but instead why you should trust him. I love the names of God. There's so many of them that I love. There's, how many love Jehovah Jireh? 
How many here can testify that God is Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides for us? He's also Jehovah Rapha. How many have experienced God as Jehovah Rapha? Raise your hand if God has healed you at some point in your life. I, I got, well, many times in my life. Jehovah Nisi, the banner over us. Amen. Jehovah Shama, the God who's there. You're ever in a tough spot or in a place and, and you feel like you're going to panic, but then only to realize that God is there with you so that you don't have to panic. That's Jehovah Shama, and so many other names. But this passage of Scripture gives us a few that are very, very special. If you would put it up, I'd put them in caps. The next Psalm 91, 1 and 2. Can you put that up there? Them. Amen. It says this, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High, that's one of the names, will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. That's another of his names. I will say of the Lord. It's another of his names. He is my refuge and my fortress. And I love this last one. My God. My God in whom I trust. Let's talk about the Most High. El Elyon in Hebrew. The Most High. Psalm 83, 18 says this. Let them know that you, whose name is the Lord, that you alone are the Most High over all the earth. What does the most high mean? That means that there's no one higher in all the earth, in all the universe. God is the most high. Right here in this country, we have a series of courts, lower courts, traffic courts, civil courts, court of appeals, but then there's something called the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court is the highest court in the land. And when the Supreme Court comes down with a decree, that is it. That's law. That's the final step. There is no higher court than the Supreme Court. There is a Supreme Court higher than the Supreme Court, and that's God's Supreme Court. He is the Most High. And why is that special? Why is it important for me to know that God is the most high? It's because that's why I don't have to worry about anything. That's why I don't have to be afraid of anything. Because I can appeal to the God who is most high. There, there, listen, you and me, we'll never get close to the Supreme Court. That's not for you and me. We're not allowed to go there. That's for important people. But we can approach the Most High God. Forget the Supreme Court. You can keep that. I can make my appeal to the Most High God. And when nobody's listening and when people are taking advantage or if there's something that I'm not getting justice about or something that I need help, I can apply to El Elyon, the most high God. Oh, does that give me confidence to launch into the year with the access I have to go to the most high? Amen. Then there's the almighty El Shaddai. How many say amen? Genesis 17, 1 says this, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. All powerful God. No one can come close to the power of God. There's no contest, you see. There, there's no one who can even try. The other powerful being 
that we know about is Satan. Powerful being for us, right? But did you know, and I'm sure you do, that he trembles at the name of Jesus? We don't have to be afraid of spiritual forces. We don't have to be afraid of demons bothering us. I love the fact that when Jesus was here on earth, there's this one story where he, the boat arrived on the land and there was this man who was filled not with one demon, but with many, many demons. And his, the, the name of the demons were legion. But the Bible says that when the boat got there, this demon-possessed man filled with many demons came running to Jesus and fell at his feet. It's like they had to report to Jesus. They couldn't even run away. The one who's the most high, El Shaddai, all-powerful God, they knew who had landed where they were. They had to come and report to Jesus and beg them not to throw them into the abyss. Begging them, why have you come? Did you come to throw us in the abyss? And they begged to go into the pigs. Begged. So if they beg of the one who lives in us, because Jesus Christ lives in us, when you receive him as your Lord and Savior, then what do we need to be afraid of? The one who not only is powerful to remove mountains, but the one who speaks things into existence. When you look up, I, I love to see on a clear day and, and look up at the stars. And I, I identified, you know, I have this little app on the phone. Yeah, there's an app for that. And, and I, I can point at stars that look kind of bright to see what they are. And if it's a planet or whatever, it'll name it for you. And uh, for the last month and a half, I've been telling my wife, come out here. See Jupiter, which is, if I'm correct in this, at least, oh, I forget how far away it is, 80-something million miles away. And then there's Saturn. That's something like 800 million miles away. And I'm looking at its light. Is that amazing or what? And then I see Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, and Venus, three stars. I can never reach that place, but God put it there. And why did he put it there? So that in 2021, this guy can look up and enjoy it. And I can say, oh, look, there's, there's that star. That, the God who put that there, El Shaddai, he's the God that's with you and with me. Amen? Oh, this is real. I'm so glad this is real. I've staked my whole life in this. El Shaddai is with us. Amen? Then the next name, the Lord. Yahweh, that's his name, Yahweh. Exodus 34, verse 6, Moses had the gumption and the nerve to ask for God to show him his glory. And he could only do it one way. He had to hide him in the cliff of the rock and then put his God hand there. And then only show him his back because no one can see God and live. He's too awesome and too great. We cannot handle it in these unglorified bodies. And verse 6 of Exodus 34 says, The Lord passed in front of Moses, calling out, Yahweh, the Lord. And I love the next part. He's not only Yahweh, the Lord, the God of compassion and mercy, I am slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. Notice that he's not a Lord. He is the Lord. Capital T. T-H-E. Capital L-O-R-D. 
the Lord, which means master, ruler over all the earth and over all creation. The Lord is our God. I love that verse. It says, blessed are the people whose God is the Lord. That's us. Our God is the Lord. How many give praise to the Lord Jesus for that? And how many can identify with the part of verse 6 that humbles me? I am slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. I'm so glad he's slow to anger because I did a lot of things in my knuckle-headed days that he should have been angry about. I failed the Lord enough in a season in my life where he had every right to get angry at me. You know why? Because I knew him. How many have known him and still failed him at some point in your life? Doesn't that humble you? That he not only didn't get angry, but was filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. You know, I'm, I'm holding this microphone and this wasn't my idea, trust me. I, I wouldn't dare hold a microphone, and I wouldn't dare feel qualified uh, to pastor a church or to do what I'm doing if it wasn't for the mercy and grace of God. You know, those of us that stand on this side of the church, we're not here because we have some special uh, 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 faith or, or, or we're, we're, we're all that. It's because God saved us. He had mercy, amazing grace, patience, right? Restored us, got some sense, and then called us. That's all. It's just a call. And you answer the call. Amen? Don't ever look at anybody here and think that they're great. God is great. Amen? I serve him with fear and trembling, and I want all the glory to go to him because nobody else is worthy of it. Nobody, nobody, no matter how much they prance around the stage or think that they're all that. Nobody's anything. We're all serving God by the grace of God. We're all alive because of his grace because every single one of us here have one thing in common. We've all failed God. The Bible says that no one is just before God. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's everybody. But thanks be to God that he is Yahweh, the Lord, the God of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. Amen. And then here's my, my favorite that brings it all together. He's my God. Elohe, my God. He's not only the Lord. He's not only Yahweh. He's not only El Shaddai. He's not only El Elyon, the Most High. He's my God, and he's your God. He's personal about it. He's not a God in general. He's not a God of a blob of people over the earth. He's my God, and he's your God with a personal relationship is what he wants and what he, what Jesus came to die for. The psalmist in Psalm 63, verse 1 says this, You, God, are my God. I love that. I love to tell God that. I get a kick out of it. That the God of all creation, the God who made everything that exists, I can say, you, Lord, are my God. How, how is that possible? It's, it's, it's beyond words. And the fact that he's my God and your God, it brings all the attributes of God personally home to you and me. Everything that God is. You know, I was thinking about um, and I say this a lot, 
and I say this with all due reverence and respect, I, I many times think uh, about worship. If you know God, you will worship him. If you know him, you will. You, you, you can't not. It's something that your soul will want to do. But I, I, I believe this with all my heart for a reason. How many know that God is all sufficient? He doesn't need anything, does he? He doesn't need me to praise him so that he could feel good about himself. He doesn't need me to do anything for him. He doesn't need me to do him a favor and go to church on Sundays. He doesn't need my money. He doesn't need my house. He doesn't need anything that I have. Yet he asked me to give it to him, everything that I am. Why? And then he says that we should worship him. It's a command. Why? It's obviously not because he needs it. It's because since he is God, and in God con is contained everything that I need and that is good on this earth and in the universe. He wants me because he loves me and because he loves you. He wants me to connect with the awesomeness of who he is. And we do that in worship. I feel this way. When I'm worshiping the Lord, if you let me off of that base, I would be down here with you worshiping the Lord. But I'm worshiping the Lord on that base. I'm not playing. I'm worshiping the Lord. And guess what? I am receiving something. When you are worshiping the Lord, you receive so much. God is doing things in you and me. That's why I encourage it so much. You know, we spend a good amount of time worshiping. And by the way, just a little preview, we're going to bring in the new year worshiping God. That's how we're going to bring it in. We're going to go out. We're going to go in singing, go out singing and come in singing to 2022, worshiping the Lord. Why? There is a, a connection that happens, a very intimate one. And I can't tell you, you know, I came uh, by, by the grace of God. I found uh, a church in Brooklyn, New York, where I stayed for 30 years, and I went into the ministry there. And it was a worshiping church. I had never been to a place where, where, that worshiped God that way. I went to, I grew up until I was about 18, 19 years old, uh, in a place where they sang, but it didn't look like anybody was paying attention to what they were singing. They would sing hymns, and, you know, they'd sing all the, the, the hymn book and people, but you wouldn't feel a thing. You wouldn't experience a thing. And so when I walked into this little building, and they began to sing and worship the Lord, I, I felt something that at first it threw me a little bit. And I'm going, like, okay, what's, what's happening here? What is this that I am feeling? I don't know. I didn't feel too comfortable because I, you know, and three weeks later I went back as God would have it. And I, you know what I figured out it was? How sad. Yes, it was the presence of God that I had never felt in all my years going to the church before that. I had never experienced the presence of God. Boy, but when I did, it, some, it did something in me. It, it, it brought my spirit alive. Now it was not just knowledge, head knowledge of what I knew about Jesus. I loved what I knew about him, but it wasn't personal. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and, and worshiping the Lord opened up my heart to a personal relationship with him. And he became my God, not the God or a God, my God. How many say Amen. I pray that you all know God as Elohe, my God. Because if you know him that way, you will not be afraid of anything that might come in 2022. Boy, when we were going into 2020, we had no idea, did we? And then we were saying, thank God, 2020 is done. We're out of here. Here comes 2021. Uh, we're still here. We're still here. But that's okay. 
Because God is Elohe, my God and your God. Amen. Then to move into the new year without fear, know that God keeps you safe from the enemy's traps and from pestilences. God keeps you safe from the enemy's traps and from pestilences. Verse 3 says this, Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. You know, sometimes you have to do a little research when you're reading the Bible. Stop and look up phrases and see what they mean because I had read that a lot and never stopped to ponder about it. He keeps you safe from the fowler. You know what a fowler is? Someone who hunts for birds. The hunter of birds is a fowler. So he says he saves us from a hunter. Well, we know who the Bible is talking about, don't we? Right? He is a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. Let me tell you how a fowler sets things up. You know, uh, in our congregation, I don't know if there's more of you there, but there's a brother who likes to hunt deer. And he tells me how he dresses and how he disguises himself and all the things he does to try to lure a deer. That's what hunters do. A fowler, a hunter, works secretly. You want to catch something, you can't be out in the open and making all kinds of noise. You got to be sneaky. You got to be creepy. You got to be quiet. You have to hide, if you will. That's one of the attributes of a fowler, a hunter. And a fowler also has different kinds of traps and different kinds of tricks to trap the prey. Just like me, I love to fish. I have different kinds of hooks and different kinds of lures. And sometimes when I'm fishing, I'll use a lure, and it doesn't seem like they like that one that day. So I have a whole box. Okay, they don't like the brown one. Let me try the red one. See if I could fool one of these fish onto this hook. And sure enough, boom, okay, the red one today. And sure enough, that particular one catches the most fish. There's different kinds of traps that the hunter loves to use. And you got to know that. And he has a trap specifically for you. Because he knows you. He knows how to trap you. The way he traps you is not the same way he's going to trap me. How many say amen? A hunter, a fowler, lures his prey with pleasurable things. He's going to give you or present to you things that you like. Things that appeal to your flesh. Things that you are drawn to. You know, when I'm either crabbing or fishing, I put some juicy stuff in their opinion, not in mine, because sometimes it's something like squid, in the trap, right? I remember when I used to go crabbing with my dad when I was a boy, he put some chicken on that, in that thing, hook it up with some wire, some chicken legs, and the juices will be coming out, and we throw that cage in there, and after five minutes, pull it out, all full of crabs trying to eat that thing. They didn't know. They didn't know it was a trap, and we got to know about the traps of the evil one. Amen? And there's one more thing that a fowler uses. Decoys. You ever see that? A duck hunter. He'll lay out some fake ducks. Why do they do that? Oh, look, there's some of our brethren. It must be safe over there because they look kind of calm over there. Let's go check it out. And in the same way, 
there's people who are fake followers of Christ, fake Christians. They're not really Christians. And you might see them doing things that the Word of God says, don't do that. But you might see them, they're decoys. And well, if they're doing it, maybe it's not so bad. Maybe it's okay for me to do that too. But I love, that's the fowler. He's sneaky. He works secretly. He sets traps, uses decoys. But I love the fact that he says that he will save you from the fowler's snare. Now let me tell you something. He saves you in two ways. I love the first one better. First of all, he warns you and he keeps you away. Amen. But sometimes he saves you when you get caught in it. How many know what it's like to be caught in a fowler's snare? He's did he save you from it? He either saves you and keeps you away from it, warning you, because then you learn. But if you happen to fall into the fowler snare's trap, he will rescue you and get you out. How many say amen and thank God for the grace of God? Give him glory tonight. He keeps you safe from the fowler. I love the fact that the word of God says that he will save you. There it is personal again. He will say, it doesn't say he will save his people. It says he will save you. It's personal with God. Amen. So he keeps you safe from the fowler, but the Bible says he also will keep you safe from plagues. How interesting. How interesting. How many know that God protects people in times of plague and disease? This is a time of plague and disease. It is. It's been like that for a couple of years. But one thing that I've been trying to encourage Christians, followers of Christ, is this. Don't be afraid. We don't have to fear like everybody else. It's different for us. Did you know that? Did you know that if Yahweh, your God, El Elyon, El Shaddai, if that's your God, you don't have to fear anything, including a plague or a pandemic. There's a story about a nobleman in the 15th century where they were going through in London something called the Black Plague. How many have ever heard of the Black Plague? It killed many, many, many people. So this nobleman, along with everybody else who had money, he happened to be a follower of Christ. So, but he was heading out of town to go to his country house and kind of ride out the plague over there. And as he was getting things prepared to head out in his horse and carriage to the country, to uh, the cottage house where, where he had there an extra house, he heard two servants talking. And they said, oh, yes, the master of the house, he's leaving to get away from the plague because I guess God is in the country, but God is not in town. I guess God protects you out there, but he doesn't do it in the town. And they were just, they weren't gossiping. They were just talking. They didn't know about the Lord. And when this nobleman heard that, he unpacked his stuff because he knew that they had to know that God is a God of wherever the trouble is. You don't have to run from it. We don't have to run and hide. Not if we serve the most high God. Not if God goes before us. Not if God has made promises to us. Does that mean that we're free from that or we, we can't get sick? No, we, we might. But you know what he did? 
He stayed and helped the people who were sick. During the Black Plague, and he didn't get sick, but he helped a lot of people. We have to make a stand. If we, if we say that God is our God, then we have to make a stand. We can't be afraid. We can't be the first ones running. Enough of that. Enough of that. The world is selling fear. I'm not buying it. How about you? Not because I'm tough. Not because I am brave because I serve the most high God, and he promised that he would take care of us. That's his promise. And by the way, the main plague that he protects us from is sin and spiritual death. Because no matter how much God heals you, or if you never get uh, COVID-19, one day we're all going to meet our maker. One day, there's an appointed time, no matter how many times we get healed, right? We're not here. We're, we're just here for a short little time. 2022 is coming. 2021 is gone. That means I have one year less left of whatever my allotted years are. And the way I do the math, I have a lot fewer ahead of me than I have behind me. But guess what? I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about that. I'm not scared of the future because my future and yours is guaranteed. This isn't a little thing that we talk to each other to make ourselves feel good. We're going to be in glory with God forever and ever. Not only will there be no plague or no chaos, but there's not going to be something called pain. I got up this morning, and I don't know what happened during the night, but my back was killing me. I was just laying down. How can that happen? Can somebody please explain that to me? How I can be laying down doing nothing and get up with a bad backache? In fact, I still have it. Something must be going on at night. I'm going to put a camera and watch. I'm suspicious. It can't be that you're just laying there and then your body hurts. Right? And if you're a pain sufferer, how many, you know, know about pain? Raise your hand if you know about pain. You know, it's a little cross that we carry here. One day, you know what? We're not, can you imagine not feeling any pain whatsoever? And, of course, as you get older, you feel more and more pain. I, my wife always laughs at me because sometimes I'm just walking, and I've said this before, my foot or my ankle decides it's, it's done for the moment. I didn't trip. I didn't hurt it. I didn't twist my ankle. I'm just walking all of a sudden. Oh, right? what happened? Oh, my foot's not working. So there's nothing you can do about it. You have to keep, you know, hopping along until it decides, okay, I'm back. Anybody know? Is that just me or does that happen to any of you? What I can't understand is young people who tell me they have back pain. Oh, no, you don't. You don't have back pain. You don't know what back pain is. Thank God. Amen. So to move into the new year without fear, know the names of God. Amen. And know that he protects you from the fowler snare, from pestilences and plagues. Praise God for scripture that speaks right into our situations. Also, to be facing 2022 without fear, know that God's covering and his faithfulness are your safety. Psalm 91.4, he will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Let me tell you about his covering. Even though God is El Shaddai, all-powerful God, the Almighty, he's also tender and gentle at the same time. You know, people who don't know God don't know that about God. They just know if they're wise and afraid of his power. Some 
try to deal with it this way. Oh, there is no God. Uh, you know, let me convince myself that there is no God. They're going to find out. They're going to be part of that crowd that the Word of God talks about in Philippians. That one day, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. But a lot of people don't know about how gentle he is. How tender he is. You know, one of the things that I'm humbled to this day was in my mess-ups, I thought for sure that something horrible was going to happen to me because I deserved it. You know, to me, it's one thing to do what you do, what people do, because you have not had a relationship with God. But when you did know him or you have known him and you still do it, that to me left me, okay, so what happens to me? What, what, uh, what forgiveness is there available to me? I, I, I didn't know. There's a question that I had. And let me, I just got to tell you this. I mean, I have a long testimony. But during the time that I was kind of running some things that happened in my life that threw me off, and I was running hard, but I would still come to church on Sundays. I was scared to stop because I thought if I would stop coming, I'll totally destroy myself. It was kind of like my lifeline. And I remember thinking, oh, man. And, you know, when you're in a place where the presence of God is and you're not living right, you know, that conviction that comes. And, and I'm thinking, surely God's going to get me. And I remember one time I was... Uh, and, and I used to play the bass in the, in the worship. And I knew I sh shouldn't have been doing that, but I was scared to stop. I knew I didn't deserve to do that, so I thought, really, God's going to get me. He's going to get me. I, I, I didn't know what to do. I, I, had, I was lost. I, I, I didn't know how to get back. And, and uh, one day I was playing the bass, and this young woman came up to me. And she says, uh, you're Joey, aren't you? And I said, yeah. Why? She goes, well, you know, I had a dream about you last night. And God wants you to know that he loves you. He loves you. And he wanted me to tell you that. And I stood there like, what? That's not the message I was waiting to hear. That's not the message I thought. I was thinking more along this line. Thus saith the Lord, you who have turned away after all that I have, I have done for you, surely destruction is before you. That's what I would imagine in my head. Not, oh, here's what God wants you to know. He loves you. I didn't know what to do with that. And then the next week, this is God is my witness, it happened again with somebody else. And then it happened a third time within a month. I love you. And maybe one day I'll finish the testimony, but long story short, God came and he tenderly loved me back into his arms. I will never, ever forget that. It humbles me to this day. Not because I was seeking him. He sought me out. Talk about the 99 and the 1, the lost sheep, how the shepherd goes out to get the lost sheep. That was me. Do you know about that? Do you know about his tender mercy? Timmy, if you come. Listen. Listen to scripture. Jesus lamenting about the people that were supposed to be the people of God in the city of God. 
This is what he said in verse 37 of Matthew 23. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather you, your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. How interesting the words that he used. As a hen gathers her chicks, listen to Verse 4 again. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. You know how tender that is? You know, my, my dad was, he loved birds. And growing up, we had a house full of birds. I mean, like 18 birds or something because they kept having babies. And we saw the babies being born and the mother taking care of them. And sometimes we'd see that picture of a bird covering a young under her wing. You know how tender a picture that is? That's our God. And when you think that you're going to get it, you ever do something as a little kid and you knew you were going to get it? And you did get it, didn't you? I sure got it. But God? No. He loves you. He woos you back. He wants to cover you. He's careful in his protection of you. Doing it gentle, gently and tenderly. That's his covering. What about his faithfulness? Because it says his faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You know what a rampart is? A fortification, a defense. Hebrews 13, 5 says, Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Never. I love that word, never. How many have people that have forsook you? I think all of us here have experienced that if you've been alive any amount of time. Betrayal. Abandonment. But not God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. How many say amen? And finally, to move into the new year without fear, know that boldness Confidence and faith are the result of God's faithfulness and protection. Verses 5 and 6 of the Psalm 91 that we read says, You will not fear. You will not fear what? The terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. You will not fear. Why? Because of his faithfulness, because of his covering, because of the confidence and boldness that we have because he takes care of us and watches over us. And I'll close with Hebrews 13, 6. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? What can anything do to me? What can a plague do to me? Oh, my soul is safe in the hands of God. My flesh may get, may, may get sick. But then again, God is Jehovah Rapha. The God who heals me. Amen. Amen. The message from God to us today is we're heading into 2022. We don't know what's coming. We don't know what craziness awaits. Maybe not. I pray not. But I don't know. Do you? But it's okay. I don't have to know. All I have to know is one thing. That if I cling to my God, if you cling to your God, it will be well with you. He will take care of you one way or the other. He will bring you in. He will bring you out. He will bring you over anything to make you succeed. 
Because that's the God who we serve. And we're here and we're alive because of his faithfulness. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. And God, my pray, prayer for all of us here and those that are watching online. God, that in 2022, Lord, no matter what comes or what happens, Lord, here's how we will be identified. We will not be afraid because you are our God. You're El Elyon, oh God. You're El Shaddai. You're Yahweh. Hallelujah. You're Elohe, my God. Hallelujah. Father, thank you, oh God, that you go before us, your word says. Your word says that you're our rear guard. Your word says that you surround us like a shield. Oh, hallelujah. If we would only know how you watch over us, even when we don't know it, you keep us from danger, oh God, that we don't even know about sometimes. But today, oh God, we declare that we will not be afraid, not when we serve a God like you, not when you love us that much. So we give you praise, honor, and glory, Lord, as we face a new year. And Lord, we declare this in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a praise offering.